The Fitbit Inspire 3, a high-tech fitness tracker that's supposed to track your sleep, your heart rate, your workouts, all of that for under $100. But is it enough to satisfy your health and wellness tracking needs? Well, in this video, I want to share my honest thoughts on the Fitbit Inspire 3 and help you decide if it's the best fitness tracker that you should buy. This video is not sponsored, but I do want to give a quick shout out to Fitbit for sending over this device for me to test out. Now, starting off with the design, the Fitbit Inspire 3 sticks with a typical fitness band style with minimal wrist real estate. It's extremely lightweight and even the silicone band itself is fairly skinny. And what I'm starting to realize is I'm leaning a little bit more into the minimal and conspicuous fitness trackers because wearables nowadays are getting a little bit bigger, especially with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and the Apple Watch Ultra coming out. I'm starting to want something that's just maybe a little bit low profile. It's so small that Fitbit made an accessory where you can clip the Fitbit Inspire 3 on your shirt or your shorts to track your workouts. It's not my personal preference just because I do like some sort of physical contact on my body just to make sure I'm getting an accurate reading. It builds on the Fitbit Inspire 2 but it now has a bright full color AMOLED display and on the back it has its new sensors including the ambient light sensor and it has the new red and infrared sensors for the blood oxygen monitoring. It's water resistant up to 50 meters which means swimming or showering, you're not gonna have any problem. And it has an amazing 10 day battery life, which I have tested. As long as you don't have the always on display on, you're gonna hit that 10 days. Now, when it comes to health and fitness tracking, this is where I think Fitbit really does set itself apart from the competition. All of their devices basically track just about everything. Calories burned, the number of hours that you've been inactive, your heart rate variability. And now the Fitbit Inspire 3 has oxygen saturation, which is measuring the blood oxygen that's in your system while you're asleep. You can also monitor your sleep quality where the Inspire Fire 3 automatically detects how much time you spent in each of the individual sleep stages such as light, deep, and REM sleep. And they also give you a sleep score so you can have a full understanding of how well you slept the night before. And they usually do this by taking into account how long you slept, your sleeping heart rate, as well as how restorative your sleep was. Unlike the Fitbit Charge 5, the Fitbit Inspire 3 does not have any sort of EDA scanning, but it does have a feature called Relax, which is basically a time that you can focus on deep breathing to get yourself back into a healthy mental state. Of course, similar to other Fitbit devices, you do get access to the Fitbit app, which basically takes all of your metrics and puts them into a simple, easy to read dashboard. I really do think they have one of the most robust fitness tracking apps out there on the market. And what's cool is you can see additional metrics that are tracked. For example, your stress management score, you have your nutrition intake, which you can actually pair with MyFitnessPal, and you can log your water intake. You can also connect with people in the Fitbit community on the community tab, and you can change out your different watch faces from the app itself. The only thing that's a bit of a bummer with the app is the fact that to get the most out of it, you do have to pay for their Fitbit premium subscription, which is around $10 a month. Or if you want to commit for the full year, it's around $80. And you do end up getting a lot of features that I do like, including the daily readiness score, which lets you know how much stress your body can take based off of your past sleep, your activity, as well as your heart rate variability. You're also getting advanced sleep metrics, as well as workout videos, recipe inspiration, mindfulness sessions, a wellness report. That's a lot of things that you're not getting if you choose not to purchase the subscription, which leads me to the few things that I don't like about the Fitbit Inspire 3. The first thing is regards to the band. I wish there were so many more band options. The standard band options are black, purple, and orange, and then you could also get a red or blue translucent band. And what I think is probably one of my favorites is the stainless steel mesh band, which I have in platinum, which are great for those more formal type occasions. And also speaking about bands, switch Switching out the bands can be an absolute pain sometimes. Just the little pin contraption could just be a little tough when you're trying to fit it into the hole and wiggle it in there. That's what she said. <laughs> I really just miss the simple slide-in band mechanism of the Apple Watch Series 7. I also wish the Fitbit Inspire 3 had a tad bit bigger of a screen. I do feel like sometimes I'm squinting when I'm looking at the watch or my different notifications and things like that. I think the Fitbit Charge 5 is like that perfect sweet spot for a fitness band type style. Also, I do wish that they fit an EDA scan in here. Again, coming from the Fitbit Charge 5, I was a little bit confused of why they added these two inductive buttons on the side of the device, which are just used to turn the device on and off here and there. I I just think that they could have put an EDA scan sensor in those. And lastly, I do wish the Fitbit Inspire 3 
gave some sort of personalized recommendations based off of your custom profile. And I say that because having all these different health metrics can be really overwhelming. And just to have some sort of insights of how you can improve would just be a huge benefit. But overall, I was pretty impressed with the Fitbit Inspire 3. It's a sleek profile design and it's something that just, I think is really good for somebody who wants just a simple fitness tracker to track steps, calories burned, but also maybe want to dive a little bit deeper into their health metrics. Honestly, if I was to do a quick review against the Whoop, I think it gives you a lot of that same data that you get to see, but now that you have a screen where you can just see it on your wrist rather than going into your app. However, if I was to choose between this or the Fitbit Charge 5, I probably would go for the Charge 5, just given the fact that it does have a bigger screen, has a lot more sensors to it, and it's only around like 30 or 40 bucks more. So that's the one that I personally would go with, but regardless, I think anybody who got the Fitbit Inspire 3 would thoroughly enjoy it. Again, it's super cheap. It's under hundred bucks. If you want to check it out, check the link in the description box below. As always, be happy, stay healthy, and embrace the hype. Woo!